WAIT A SECOND! Before I continue, I'd like to thank my good friend the Film Slacker on Face Punch for helping me out with ironing out my introduction thingy, and the Face Punch community who inspired me to continue with their admittedly surprising, overwhelmingly positive response to my channel's pilot. I am super grateful for all the support from seeing just one video because, I mean, that shit is just unreal. I'm gonna take this time to establish who I am as well as the title of the videos. You can call me P. Goonie. That's what I'm also going to be calling this, a uh, series, if you will. You can also call me, or it, PG, if that's your style. Now, with that being said, I FUCKING LOVE CRASH BANDICOOT! Two! This game is my number one. Top ten, top five, top of all lists, each and every game of the year, Jeff Keighley, and, of course, I can't address the second game in this series without mentioning the first one and the series overall, so allow me to mention the first game and the series overall. <sighs> yes! Yeah! Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about this fucking incredible masterpiece of digital software. I mean, what doesn't this game do right? The controls, the levels, the music, the art direction, the graphics, which strangely hold up without looking like a polygonal mess. The story is something I won't be paying much attention to. This game defines what I look for in all games that I play, generally speaking. This is the quintessential Crash Bandicoot. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just reel this back in for a moment. Let's break this shit down. From the very moment you hit the power, the game immediately draws you in. The music crescendos into some sort of, like, undefinable techno-ish music genre. You're flying through space. The Sony computer entertainment thing shows up and BAM! Crash Bandicoot comes bursting in a fucking jetpack right at the screen. Then we see him in all his glory. The marsupial in the jetpack. I wonder if we only got to use the jetpack. This game is 17 years old and the intro still pumps me up. I've just spent an extended amount of time alone on this game's 30 second intro, let's get started. This game controls like a PS1 wet dream. Very few games in my life have really reached this level of solid controlling. The D-pad and analog stick are used to jog around. The speed, it, it, it's just right. Strolling through a level feels natural. You don't ever feel like you're going too slow to get through in a single lifetime, and you never go too fast so you can't soak in the levels while you're at it. You can also jump over the unfortunately placed holes in the game with the X button, and new to this game is the very interesting and super useful sliding mechanic. You can slide to take out enemies, I guess, or something, but its real function is using it by jumping mid-slide to get this badass high jump where Crash does this rad pose. So I ain't holding up, back in motherfucker, I got Then we come to the signature move of the Crash series, which modern iterations have managed to completely botch somehow. Tornado Spin is what I think it's called. Basically, Crash Tasmanian doubles himself towards enemies, and basically anything else in the game. Literally anything you touch gets sent flying into fucking oblivion. Which leads to some super self-defeating moments where you actually can accidentally spin extra lives and fruits away from you. Crashing and spinning into enemies is super fun and satisfying, making you feel powerful, in control. This is your world and you run it. God, this game gets me hard. Now what are controls without an excellent world to navigate? That was rhetorical, the answer is useless. Anyways, this game is fucking pretty. For an era that gave us our first pointy breasts, this game took full advantage of the grandfather powerhouse itself, the PlayStation 1. The design itself is just as smart as it looks too. Based Naughty Dog knew just what kind of potato TVs the world of 1996 was dealing with and said, okay, well, this looks like fucking shit because TVs are still just awful and it's 1996, what the fuck do we do? How are people supposed to see this guy running around and shit? And with that, Crash became orange and the world couldn't see him any different. Each level in the game follows a certain theme and this game has a lot of them. There's places like the jungle levels, the snow levels, the river, the fucking sewers? What the fuck am I doing? Welp, I can't see shit. The levels not only use a variety of colors, but use them in such moderation that the player isn't overwhelmed with too many, and each and every object is distinct and distinguishable. Each level itself has its own distinct atmosphere as well. No two levels will ever really feel too similar. 
I'd also like to point out the numerous wacky deaths that this character goes through. I mean, look at this. Even your failures have added cartoon detail. These have the strangest effect on you when you're playing, too. If you're in a casual cruising mood, then watching these is pretty entertaining. Like, gosh darn it, haha, <laughs> I'd better try again. If not, it's more of a fuck you, Crash. I'm glad you're dead, you orange fucking rat. And either way, it's simply awesome. This would be all fine and dandy, but what good is any of this if you just run from point A to point B for 25 levels? 30 if you count the super secret sex warp no more! Any level in Crash 2 consists of some very important hallmarks of the entire Crash Bandicoot franchise. Crates, Wumper Fruit, and new to the franchise in this game are the Purple Crystals. Collecting these crystals is the main goal of the game. However, the second main collectible in the game are gems. Now get this, in order to collect the silver gems, you have to break every single box in a given level without missing a single one. Seems simple until you realize just how many fucking boxes they can pack into a level. And this includes the intermission -y bonus stages that play in 2D. Oh, but that's not all. We also have the color gems, which require that you know this game's dirty little secrets. Hmm? What's that? Huh? What do I mean? How about going through an entire level without hitting any boxes, which triggers the blue gem at the end of the level where the silver gem would be? It's genius. Go against everything you know about Crash and essentially the basic rules of platforming to collect an item that is essential to unlocking the real ending. Jesus! That's the kind of cruel but ingenious tricks this game will pull on you. That's some real old school challenge right there. So, I'm kind of a music fanatic. I love music probably more than average. So it should be no surprise that I believe Crash 2 has one of the most phenomenal soundtracks on Earth. I'm especially a fan of good synths, which explains my supreme passion for bands like Arcade Fire and LCD Sound System. And with Crash 2 having some clear new wave influence, thanks to the legendary Mark Mothersbow of Devo fame, I can easily bump to the series tunes even today. Seriously, all the songs in the game fit exactly where you are and are super memorable. Whether it's the warm, tropical vibes that come from the jungle levels or the cold, metallic, echo-driven sewer theme. I think my favorite would actually have to be that seriously tough sewer theme. Have you heard that shit? Yeah, I know. Thank me later. Later on, we also get to hear the sick, out-of-this-world space theremin stuff. This music is probably what inspired me to really appreciate bass lines how I do. Oh, and this game fucking invented the xylophone. Aside from the basic formula of just running forward through a level, a majority of levels have their own formulas which change the gameplay and actually have become super iconic in their own regards. The third level of the game has you going through some ruins atop a river, and then you have to surf. Wait, what? I am surfing, this is real, Crash is surfing, on some insane rocket-powered surfboard, oh my god. Oh, this is a game that was after my own heart forever. Wait a second, this hype train isn't stopping, the tracks are under construction, we're going express, fuckers! Enter Crash Dash, the fifth level in the game. Wait, where's the entrance? Oh shit, I'm running backwards? Well, I don't know how I'm gonna... Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Sh oh shit! Oh, it's a ball! The ball is chasing me! Oh god! Even Crash is shitting himself! Oh god! This game contains Indiana Jones-style chasing sequences! That's fucking- I mean, look at that shit! Oh look, it's Crash in a snow level riding on a tiny polar bear?! I can't even begin to express the joy this brings. I want to inject this level into my bloodstream. Gee, I wonder if this game has any more surprises up its sleeve. We've already seen chases. We've seen riding on bears. Wait. Remember when I said this game was amazing? It's all these little tweaks and changes to the gameplay that ensure that this game doesn't ever really feel repetitive. Especially when you get to the fifth warp room, which really flips the switch and introduces the jetpack levels. Which you may remember was foreshadowed by the title screen, Ain't That Shit Smart? 
So if the game doesn't test your skills enough, after each warp room, get this, after each warp room, you go up using the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup in the middle to go to the next room. Or not? Oh my god, there's boss fights. And they can get hard, dude! It's the kind of hard that gives you that sick rush of adrenaline that you can't really use towards anything physically. Each boss fight is uniquely crafted and, while some can be pretty simple, they're all super fun to play. It's one of the few accounts of difficulty not really being directly related to the amount of fun. This game isn't really difficult, but it's still fun. <sighs> I've talked about the game itself and how fucking crazy good it is and why I love it as a game, but I really want to express just exactly what this game means to me. I grew up playing Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot 2 is the first game I really remember ever playing. This isn't just another disc, another piece of software, it's the game that set off the spark. The game that introduced me to the idea of wonderful worlds of grass, snow, and space. The idea of powerful protagonists that weren't even human, that couldn't even speak. I remember all the times that I tried and failed. I can remember the day me, my dad, and my sister went to go get our PlayStation. I can remember having to tell my sister to put the game in for me because I really didn't know how. I remember watching her play. I remember trying to play myself. I remember the not-so-expansive collection of games that a middle-class family put together. I remember my one true hero, Crash Bandicoot, always being there for me, through thick and thin. Tough for me when I wasn't. You can fail again and again and again and again when you turn the power on. He's always ready, jogging just as fast, spinning just as strong. Those are my most precious memories. If you ask me, that's a tough act to follow. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's uh, it's PG here. I just wanted to thank everybody for watching this video just now, and for also, if you did, watching the other video that I made, uh, which was also the channel's pilot. Um, it really means a lot to everyone who subscribed. Um, I literally uploaded a single video, and the response was, again, overwhelmingly positive. I couldn't imagine that ever happening to me, okay? That was... It, I don't know what other words to use, but seriously, it was legitimately unreal. So thank you so much. I have like, I mean, at the time that I'm even recording this right now, I have 65 subscribers. Um, and I don't know if that number is ever going to climb higher. Uh, I hope it does because that would be, that would honestly be really, really sick. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks so much for the feedback. Um, it really means a lot to me. So, you know, I, I hate to, I hate to be the guy, you know, I hate doing it, but you know, if you, I mean, if you, okay, okay, uh, meet me halfway on this. If you could, I mean, if you feel like posting a comment and you do, that'd be amazing. If you don't, I totally understand. I, I don't leave comments all the time on anything that I love watching. Um, yeah, I completely understand if you don't. And if you don't, if you forget to like the video or if you just don't like it because that's not your thing, I understand. But if you do, it would mean like a lot to me because I don't really get them that much. Um, like at all. I mean, I, I did with the first video, but that's, that's not really, that's not the point I'm, I'm trying to make right now. Um, anyways, this has gone on for way too long. Uh, you probably closed the video by now, but if you haven't, then kudos to you for listening to me for this long. Jesus Christ, you are clearly dedicated to whatever cause I am, uh, uh, dedicating myself to. So thank you very much. And, uh, I'll see you.